Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reading a story called Toy Story 3 Alternative Ending. This story was suggested by Super Tank Engine. Thank you Super Tank Engine for the suggestion, I appreciate it greatly. I really enjoyed reading this story and if you'd like to check it out for yourself, I'll be putting a link in the descriptions below. So again, thank you Super Tank Engine for the suggestion, I appreciate it greatly. I wish I could give you the classic, this happening to a friend of a friend of mine. I honestly truly do. Then I could make it a lot less gruesome in my head than it really was. Then I could doubt it like the rest of you because even though this happened to me, even though there were witnesses, sometimes I'm not quite sure I believe it myself. It's the wails of my now 4 year old daughter at night that remind me that it did indeed happen. Katie had just turned 3 a couple of weeks before the incident. One thing I loved to do was take her to the theater every few Saturday mornings for a kids movie presentation. It went from old classics like Snow White to recent Pixar movies. It wasn't fun and enjoyable and that way Katie mingled with other kids her age who loved the same movies. At the time Katie was literally obsessed with anything related to Toy Story. We had all three movies on DVDs which she watched religiously. Thank God, I love those movies too because you can get sick of watching the same thing a minimum of five times a day, let me tell you. And also had Woody, Buzz and Jessica dolls which she loved to sleep with. She was afraid of trucks by the time she turned two so I taught her to pull the strings of either Jessica or Woody to scare the bad trucks away in the middle of the night. Honestly, those dolls were a blessing. So when I found out Toy Story 3 was being shown at the kids theater, I jumped it on the occasion. Even though Katie had seen it countless times before, there was nothing like watching it on the big screen and I knew she'd be ecstatic. I invited my friend John to see the movie and he accepted. The showing was supposed to start at 8 a.m. but it didn't start until 9. It wasn't so bad since the kids were having fun together. Some parents left frustrated but I stuck around as did about half a dozen other mothers and one father with their kids. The theater employee apologized and offered us free candy. All good, who refuses free candy? I'll go into the cliché of stories like this and say that the movie started normally because, well, it did. The intro was the part Katie liked the most where Woody and Jessica chased the train and Buzz saved Woody at the last minute. Actually, nothing off happened for most of the showing. Once in a while it would glitch where the image would freeze for a second and then fast forward to catch back with the sound. While I noticed it, the kids didn't care as long as they got to see their heroes in jumbo size. Nearing the end is when things got strange. It didn't seem off at first, but I would soon find out as every other family in the theater would, there's a point in the movie where Woody and the other toys end up in the dump after Lotso manages to drag Woody into a dumpster and the garbage truck picks them up. The little pizza plant aliens get taken away by one of the trucks in the dump and then Woody and his friends are carried onto a conveyor belt. The moment they hit the belt, the screen flickered and the sound jammed on a constant loop with the toys screaming when they fell. And then we got to look at the well-known blue screen of death with that awful screaming sound going on and on like a broken record. I always found the lopping, jumpy sound that comes with a blue screen of death disturbing. Hell, I always thought a scratchy record or CD teeth chattering eerie. Maybe it's because I used to have a computer that crashed on me every half hour and killed in my files. It made me nervous and when John and his father burst into mocking laughter, 
I uttered a nervous laugh too. The kids were confused, but for those who had just enough knowledge of computers, it was really funny. I had a other friend who worked at the theater and he quit for another job around the time computers replaced people in the cabins projecting the film. I guess nothing will ever replace a good old human being. When nobody came to check on us, John got up and left to ask someone to turn the thing off or restart it. Katie didn't seem faced by this and sh shrugged it off, waiting patiently. She was always pretty smart and mature, knowing she could watch it at home anyways. A little boy was crying and the mother had to leave when the sound became ridiculously loud. It wasn't constant, that screaming sound, you see. It lowered to a near sharp whisper and became loud enough to make my head buzz. At some point, Katie gave me a worried look as she clasped her hands over her ears. Before I made the final decision to leave, however, the screen went black and an employee returned it with John and a flashlight, apologizing and letting us know that they would resume the movie shortly. Apparently, they had been having equipment problems all morning. Shortly after the projector came back to life, the movie resumed a few minutes prior to the crash only to crash at the very same spot a second time. Loose screen of death again. By then, John and I were laughing. Don't get me wrong, we only paid a $5 fee for entrance, but this was getting ridiculous. Seriously, John exclaimed. This time, no one had to get an employee. The screen flickered and the movie started where it left off almost immediately with a loud click coming from the cabin behind me. It reminded me of a gun as it clicked the safety off and I couldn't help but look up at the beam of light. Might have been an employee kicking the machine back in gear for all I know. As long as it worked, I wasn't going to complain but come this point, another mishap and I was gone. Watching it at home was a whole lot less troublesome. The movie seemed fine come this point except for the sound, like someone had put a pillow over the speaker to muffle it. Something else was odd, but I didn't notice what it was until Lotso betrayed the toys by not pressing the stop button on the belt and letting them fall in the incinerator. It was their voices. Their voices were different, not by a whole lot. Maybe the kids didn't notice, but I did. And I know John did too because we exchanged curious glances. They were similar, but Woody, for example, clearly was not voiced by Tom Hanks anymore. It's around that time that I felt something was very wrong. My stomach clenched painfully and I felt my heart beat the drum roll. There was no reason for it. I had no explanation for the voices being different, only the difference didn't just end there. If you've seen the movie as many times as I have, you know that while the toys eventually give up and accept their fate by holding hands and waiting for their death, a light comes on and a giant claw hauls them out of the incinerator at the very last second. It keeps you on edge the first time, but once you see it, you know better. Except I didn't know better anymore. The animation was fluid, but by now it wasn't right. Have you ever watched those old 1930s cartoons like Betty Bop where everything always moves and never stops? A few years later they figured out that it was more natural to have stop animations because that's how we worked. We didn't notice it but we stopped between motions. Grab cup of coffee. Stop. Bring it to lips. Stop. Chug it down. Stop. Put it back down. Stop. It's subtle but it made all the difference in animation when they realized that and things started looking a whole lot less psychedelic from that moment on. Well, the animation on the big screen just didn't stop moving, like those old cartoons. There was no stopping between action and motion, like they sort of danced around everything in some way or another. And let me tell you. If you thought it looked psychedelic with 30s hand-drawn animation, computer animation makes it look twice as disturbing. 
That clearly was not like the movie I had at home and it wasn't like the rest of the movie we'd watched to this point either. I noted John was looking at me again and I shrugged it. I didn't have any more of an explanation than he did. I suppose I remained seated out of gross curiosity. As the saying goes, it's like watching a train wreck and no matter how horrible it is, you just can't look away. There was none of the dramatic music I was used to hearing. In fact, there was no music at all, but only the sounds of fire crackling. Maybe it just wasn't necessary. Imagery was enough. Already I felt a lump in my throat just watching the animation. I couldn't move. Nail it to my seat. The claw saving the toys never came down. There was no heavenly light before a last minute rescue. There was no rescue however. The toy screamed and screamed and screamed. An ear shattering screech that would ring in my head for days to come and would wake me in the middle of the night. The toys held hands which shrank as their plastic melted into a thick flesh colored goo. I remember Woody's face the most because this is what the screen mainly focused on as they advanced towards the fiery pit in the middle. Black bubbles pop it first in his cheeks and then his gaping mouth opened wider forcing a wide smile than it was humanly possible. His lips stretched to reach lengths until his whole jaw melted off at the hinges, leaving long, thick, liquid streaks of burning plastic behind. I was reminded of the way cheese strings went warm and melted, which forced a completely insane bout of laughter out of me. Cheese and plastics. What the fuck was I even looking at? The banshee-like screams from Woody escalated and escalated and with the speakers all around, it came from everywhere at once. What the hell is this? John screamed. My stomach cramped as despair ripped through me and I thought I would collapse right there. I couldn't move, glued to my seat. Woody's eyes rolled down his cheeks like they weren't painted on but were real globes of gelatinous substance that burst like egg yolks, leaving gaping holes in place. Their eyes, all their eyes, were the only things that acted as real eyes might, not like plastic or fabric. Later I realized why. Eyes are the mirror of the soul. Eyes, even if they look painted, are always real always and so as they exploded into a liquid state so did their souls burning in the fiery pits of hell it's silly to think that way of a cartoon character but that's the only explanation i found for the difference i'm not sure it makes me feel any better to think that way actually it makes me feel worse woody's hat had melted over his head and shaped it unnaturally and with it, the fabric of his clothes caught fire in one burst. It cracked like some demonic laughter, bursting into sparks, convulsing back. Except he didn't go far because his hands were fused with Slinky and Buzz's hands. The screaming was like the sound of pure hell, like something from a demon. The voices, though wrong, had sounded human until now. I felt a sharp cramp in my hands because I had been holding on to the arms of my seat as though they were my lifeline and in some way they were. The action kept me grounded because a part of me feared I'd end up in that pit and melt off as well if I didn't keep some of myself in this reality. Most of the footage focused on Woody but you got a glimpse of the others too. Toys like Buzz, Rex, and Jesse. Toys that were made exclusively of plastic, melted quickly in a disturbing colorful goo. There was no blood, just plastic melting, molding itself off and bursting into flames. It was horrible and graphic. 
Maybe it was because you get to know these characters so well that you feel them alive despite the fact that they are toys or cartoons. You don't need blood or, or organs spill it. You just need to see their suffering. So deep you feel it too. I even felt my skin start to prick and burn in response. I should have gotten out sooner. Take Katie with me to spare her. It was a mistake on my part not to. I'll regret it for the rest of my life. The screeching turned it to wails. I was able to come out of my trance long enough to realize that the sound of crying and screeching did not come from the speakers anymore but the people around me, many of them being kids. There was nothing but the sound of the cracking fire from the pit around us now. Half of the toys were dead, but the children and adults alike, myself included, were the ones screaming and weeping. Buzz back bursted open with sparks coming out. With a sudden burst of strength, I grabbed Katie in my arms and ran out of the theater. I didn't look back, though I could now smell the burning plastic. It wasn't just stuck in my nose. It clanged to my clothes and my skin too. I thought I heard someone vomit and collapse behind me. I'm surprised I didn't. I noted a father with his crying son and daughter had scurried past me. Then again, he might have been smarter than me and left before I did. I noticed that John was not behind me, but that does not matter at this point. The father was yelling at the employees who stood giving tickets. That poor kid didn't seem to get what he was saying. He seemed overwhelmed by the screaming and crying. Soon enough, the small crowd of parents were surrounding him. Things started getting violent and the kid had to escape. Me? I just stood there with Katie screaming in my arms, half hearing her still in shock. I felt lost. I didn't know what to do or where to go. Should I go home? Join the mob of angry parents and wailing children? Go to the police? What? My feet move it on their own and I let my instincts take over. The door. I was leaving. It was better for Katie anyways to take her away from this place. I felt empty and the smell of burnt plastic seemed even stronger as I stepped outside. When a hand gripped my arm, I jumped and yelped. It was the father with his child in his arms, sobbing in his shoulder. It turned out his name was Jeremy. We exchanged phone numbers after he told me he would see to it to get an explanation for what happened. The rest of the day did not go well. I took two baths with Katie, but the deaf stench wouldn't leave. Eventually, she stopped crying and fell asleep out of pure exhaustion. As for me, even though I was completely off, even though I felt like I could fall asleep too, I couldn't. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw the lifelike eyes of Woody slip down his cheeks and burst. Or his wide smile and jaw hanging loose until it crashed on his lap. Just before my husband came home from work, I got a call from Jeremy. I remember slumping on my chair as he spoke and a new set of hot tears streaming down my cheek. My heart hurt and my eyes burned. I thought they might pop right out too. Jeremy said that the theater's management took the remaining few parents to see the computer that held the projection of the movie. Sure enough, they found a virus stored in there, which streamed a homemade version of the movie. But the streaming led to nowhere. Jeremy's job was to handle computers, so he was able to look through it for those who couldn't. He tried to trace back where the streaming had come from and the virus, but there was no leads to follow. Either the prankster was an employee and had set up the virus for the computer itself, had covered his tracks very well, or something was very, very wrong with this picture. I preferred a rational explanation to something of outer nature. 
So I opted to believe it was just... Edit that out. So I opt to believe it was an employee who had access to the computer. Either way, other than the corrupted files the virus had left behind, there was no evidence of the disturbing footage we watched. It was gone. That was a little more than a year ago. Anything related to Toy Story has left my house. My husband, he wants to believe us but I can tell he's skeptical. He says someone had to animate the thing and people had to act out the voices. That takes a lot of dedication because while the animation was constantly moving, the quality of the image and characters was as good as the original movies. He says that it's one hell of an effort to put into a one-time prank. He's right though. I never heard anything of the sort again. You'd think it would have come out if it had. I checked and Jeremy did too. There's no records of anything like it anywhere. Jeremy even tried to contact Disney and Pixar but they never returned his calls or emails, as expected. Theater is closed now. I think someone sued them over what happened, but all the news mentioned was bankruptcy. It's been a week after the incident. I got in an email from John. He decided to stay and record the ending of the movie for evidence. He told me that the final scene showed the toy either melt or still melting getting engulfed by the flames. Then I cut to Lotso, looking down with a wide smile and started to laugh and the screen cut to black with Lotso laughing echoing. He said that he wished he could jump into the screen and throw Lotso into the burning pit of fire and slowly watch him burn to death. To this day, I still get a whiff of burning plastic once in a while when Katie screams at night, suffering from those horrible nightmares.